Well, good morning, everybody. Happy, happy Sunday. All right. You guys are just all like in your seats and serious today. It's the weather. <laughs> okay. Well, if you want to open your bulletin, I got a couple of things going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, today's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms and grandmas and like a mom. Yes. Um, we we say thank you, and we're blessed by all of the stuff that you do for us. All the love. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> it's true. Yes. Um, so yes, we're very blessed by our moms. And you know what? We're like extra blessed because we have this church family and so we have like you know, everybody has lots of moms. Everybody has lots of grandmas. We share around here. So, yes. But, yes. Yeah, so today we pray that you all are extra blessed. Extra, extra blessed. Um, okay. This week, Tuesday, 10 o'clock, intercessory prayer. And Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, adult Bible study, kids of the kingdom, and club 316. Everybody take out a pen. Or pretend like you're taking out a pen and open your bulletin and change men's and women's breakfast to Saturday, May 21st. 21st. Yep, 21st. And we're doing this exercise because maybe you'll remember this more than by me actually putting the correct date in the bulletin. I totally did it on purpose just for that reason. Um, so yes. Because um, the fourth Saturday would be Memorial Weekend, and so we're going to just bump it up a week. So Saturday, May 21st. Put it in your phone. Write it down somewhere. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Saturday the 21st, 8 a.m. men's breakfast and 10 a.m. women's breakfast. And Wednesday night Bible study. I'm going to be starting a new study you were made for this moment by Max Lucado. Lucado, Lucado, do we ha Max, do we know the actual? Okay. Um, books are gonna be $15 and you can order yours today with Lorna, so. Oh, it's a study of Esther. Mm -hmm. That makes sense with the title. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, all right, so order your books, change the date for breakfast, have a great Mother's Day, now it's time to worship. Okay, let's stand. Lord, we thank you for today, Lord, in your house, Lord, we thank you for this time, Lord, that we can come and we can be together Lord, in your presence, in your house, Lord, to worship you, Lord, to hear from you, and Lord, we pray that today, God, that you would come and you would fill this place. Lord, come and fill this place with your presence. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, in your presence, God, is everything that we need. So, Lord, we all come in today, Lord, with different things on our hearts and on our minds, Lord, different worries and concerns, and Lord, we thank you that, Lord, in your presence, Lord, that's all we need. Everything we have need of, God is found in your presence. And so, Lord, we come and we enter in. We enter in this morning, Lord. We're ready to worship and praise you. And, Lord, we know that we will receive what we have need of today. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you give us strength. You give us wisdom. You give us direction. Lord, you give us encouragement. Lord, all that we need, Lord, is found in your presence. So we ask that you would come today in your fullness. And, Lord, we step into it. Lord, we enter into it, Lord. Lord, we know that you can come 
And Lord, we still have to take the step into your presence, Lord, to receive. So Lord, we set our focus on you. Lord, ready to worship you and praise you this morning. Lord, to receive all that you have for us. Lord, to take advantage of this time in your house. Lord, to receive all that you have in your presence this morning, Lord. How we love you, Jesus. How we love you, Lord. Come and fill this house. Come and fill this house this morning, Lord. How we love you. How we love you. Amen. Amen. The goodness of God. Uh, we're surrounded by all kinds of uh, sound bites and uh, things that break and uh, concerns and worries, but uh, God wants us to be God-focused, focused on Him. Um, one of the songs we were singing about, um, you know, I surrender now, this is my surrender. Uh, oh God, come and do what you want to do. Uh, that our desire would be His desire. Things work better that way. Just hint, uh, things work better that way. Uh, come God and do what you want to do. And, and everything rolls better. Uh, humanly, we're always chomping at the bit to get our will done, and God says, How, come, come and sit with me, walk with me and talk with me, and I'll show you uh, things that you would not imagine if you were just left to your own. Uh, God does have a plan, and he has purpose, uh, and it exceeds uh, our little finite plan if I can just get this done, if this will just fall into place, then things will be good. And we can only see so far, but God's vision and scope and plan far exceeds ours. And so um, it's the challenge of humanity, but it's the blessing of God uh, for us to walk in His ways. As we pray today, uh, just mindful of that is one thing. When we pray, what do we usually, oh God, fix this, cure that, straighten this out, and uh, God's calling us to just walk with Him. Uh, remember the old Greyhound commercial? What was it? Uh-huh. <laughs> Leave the driving to us. Uh, every now and then, God whisper those, whispers those words to me. You know, he's not the co-pilot. Uh, he's in the captain's chair. And so uh, he would rather, th we're on along for the ride. And he'll take us places we would not have imagined. So, Father, I thank you for each one who's here today. And I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your presence, for your desire, design, will, and purpose. And, oh, God, how much we want our own will to be done and how much we want the things that we see to get uh, straightened out to our uh, desire. But, Lord, and... Uh, The greater picture and Jesus as you taught us to pray your kingdom come your will be done on earth like it is in heaven upon further reflection yeah that prayer God your will be done on earth like it is in heaven the Lord we know that in heaven Everything is fixed and running fine, correctly. Nothing's broken, nothing, no one's sick. Things run smoothly, properly, effectively. And there is peace and joy and celebration. Uh, we ask, O oh God, that your will and purpose be done on earth like it is in heaven. We thank you for it, O oh God. I ask for your blessing 
and all that comes with it. Your will and all that comes with it. Healing and health and soundness, provision, peace and prosperity. Father God, we ask for your blessing, for your will and your activity, your purpose be accomplished. Lord, and I pray for every, uh, that every ache and pain and uh, brokenness, be it physical or emotional, Father God, for your uh, healing and soundness to come in this house, for every heart to be sound and whole, every brain and central nervous system, every bone and joint and organ uh, well healed and whole. I pray, O oh God, for every uh, emotion because you said that you restore our soul. So I pray for the restoring of our soul. The restoring of our soul. Come, O oh God, and overshadow us and restore our soul, our intellect, emotion, and will, our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. O oh God, bring that to pass, the restoring of our soul. Peace that comes from you, O oh God. Peace that comes from you. And I thank you for it. Thank you for the fullness of it. The fullness of it of your peace, O oh God. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, it's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, Father God, thank you. Thank you for life, and thank you for hope. Thank you for provision and your blessing. And Lord, we ask that you would receive all that is given today. Multiply it to your use and may your blessing rest on your people. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, it is Mother's Day. Yay. And uh, we have a little uh, video clip to show here at this time. Just a little shout out to the moms. We, uh, we appreciate you. So we had to put your uh, faces in front of everyone just to uh, reinforce the, the thought. So James, if you can help me here this morning. We have a few lovely parting gifts for, uh, for each of you moms this morning. And uh, so... Now, this day is just beginning, so uh, I hope that 
the remainder of the day will be filled with uh, uh, much more than just a little uh, item here. So uh, moms are uh, critical to God's plan and God's economy. And we've got all kinds of social reengineering going on in the country of varying degrees. And debates and uh, yelling and screaming goes on. Uh, but when all that simmers down and we just pay attention to what God has to say, uh, moms are an essential element in God's plan. God's plan and purpose only unfolds uh, with the uh, people and individuals and plans that he's put in place. Uh, otherwise, it's, uh, life is destined for lots of train wrecks. So uh, you are essential personnel, moms. Essential personnel in the kingdom of God. And we appreciate you and all that you do. Now, on the back of these little items, on the back side, on the bottom left corner, there might be a little white circle. Oh, I see one in the back, and one here, and one in the front. That is all three. Ooh. So, James, <laughs> my courier. I did my job right there. Yes, you did. <clears throat> Splendid. <laughs> well, happy Amazon to you. I mean, happy shopping. <laughs> Give you a little something to do. Yeah. Amen. Well, Father, I thank you for our moms. Thank you for moms. Thank you for your purpose and your plan and how you work all this out. Uh, thank you for the unsearchable riches of your wisdom. I pray for your blessing and wisdom, strength and soundness, peace and joy and healing and purpose to fill the heart and understanding and life of each mom today. We thank you for it. Bless them, Father God. Bless them with love and joy. Bless them with hope and peace. Bless them with strength and endurance. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Well. Um, amen. Um, I have something I want to share uh, this morning. And um, um, so I'm, my prayer is that I uh, will uh, deliver uh, all of it the right way and not goof up on anything. I think uh, God is good and he has a good word for us today. So we thank you for your word, God, and ask that you would not only open our hearts to receive it, but help uh, my thoughts and words to convey your word and heart to us. And we thank you for it, O oh God. We thank you for it. And we ask God for your blessing on your word. And may it bring comfort and hope and strength and understanding to every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I mentioned that moms are essential in God's plan, uh, God's plan, his economy, and his purpose. And uh, he's wired you individually and specifically for these tasks. And not every mom's the same, and not every circumstance that you face is the same, but there are some common denominators. And uh, we see that you are uh, gifted and anointed uh, a mother's love is like no other love uh, in the world. Your love and nurturing and your tenacity for your children are uh, what God provides and has designed for the raising up of a generation to know the Lord. In John 17, Jesus says, this is eternal life that we might know him. And uh, that's an essential uh, element and task 
that God has put in your heart, not just to give birth, but to nurture and love and uh, train so that they will know the Lord. Knowing God is life. Uh, to love Him. And in the Scripture, the languages that uh, speak the word love uh, don't just reflect emotion, uh, but also loyalty. Loyalty is a, a word to help describe love in the Scripture. Loyalty. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. They said, "What is the greatest commandment?" They're trying to uh, trick question Jesus into picking one of the ten. Then they could say, "Oh, he's not Messiah because they're all the same." And so uh, Jesus is a little smarter than uh, any of the leaders of the world. And he said, "Well, there's uh, there's one, and it's you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength." And the second is like it. You'll love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, love. Uh, loyalty. Loyalty to God. And they, so they decided that was the end of their questionnaire. Um, and to serve him. Jesus told uh, Satan in the temptation, uh, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So... Uh, that wasn't just a, a little cameo shot in the wilderness. Uh, that was a real contest of wills and a contest of chess players. Uh, the temptations were uh, on the surface, hey, what's wrong with that? Uh, but it was, uh, this was a uh, uh, cat and mouse uh, debate, and so... Uh, Jesus cuts to the chase in these three episodes in Matthew chapter 4 in the first few verses. And this one he says, you shall worship the Lord and him only shall you serve. Uh, there are things that Jesus speaks that, uh, that the world likes. Love one another and don't judge and you know, things like that, and they're all true. But he says some other things that are true that they'll get their nose twisted out of shape about. And they are of exclusivity. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. And nobody gets to the Father but by me. And he wasn't teasing. There are exclusivities that he speaks. You shall worship the Lord, and him only shall you serve. Um, there are things that Jesus says that in the world are wonderfully popular, and other things that he says that in the world they are not popular at all. There's still the truth, the absolute truth, and nothing but the truth. He speaks his word and truth to us that we might be well and whole and sound and not twisted and contorted and goofed up. Uh, Paul reminded Timothy of the, uh, of the call, of the purpose, and the function of motherhood. Uh, not in so many words, but in... Uh, 2 Timothy 1 5. All the way to the other end of the Bible. 2 Timothy 1 5. I'll find it. He says, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that's in you, Timothy, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois. And your mother Eunice, I'm persuaded it's in you also. What does that speak of? It speaks of uh, faith that is passed down and instilled in the hearts of our children. And they, in their children, 
You see the pattern? And these were moms, not that this is only a uh, mother's task, but um, Timothy's father, uh, I believe, was a Greek, uh, a non-believer. His mom and grandma were believers, similar to uh, Luke, who was a Greek. And uh, uh, so sometimes there uh, can be a break in the heritage of faith, but here it's passed along by grandma to mom to a son. And so the, uh, uh, the responsibility of passing that on to our children is underlined uh, here by Paul's comment to Timothy. People won't come to know God, love Him, believe Him, and serve Him in a vacuum. They don't come to that decision just by the air that's swirling around on a windy day. They come by that by uh, someone imparting, communicating, encouraging uh, us in faith. And in life, and so here's Timothy, who was named among the apostles. Well, he didn't get that way just because he hung out with Paul. It was already put in him from the time he was little by his grandmother and his mother. There's some instilling of that. Um, I mentioned about your uh, love and tenacity and uh, uh, nurturing. So it's not just nurturing. Uh, lovey and and but there's some tenacity uh, involved in that as well. Um, have you ever thought that? Uh, question that came to my mind uh, early this morning. Um, you ever thought that you might be the answer to somebody's prayer? Hmm. Uh, maybe the prayer of your parents or um, maybe your spouse's parents as they prayed for Mr. Wright. God answers prayer, right? Um, now, I don't know why it took so long. Maybe I didn't hear it the first three times it was told me. I don't know, but it seems like I never heard of this until I was uh, in my 50s and was uh, visiting my folks. And uh, my mom was talking about uh, uh, being a teenage mom with little understanding uh, as to uh, how to go about being a mom. She had come from a broken home. And so suddenly now she has a little bambino. And, uh, oh, God, how am I going to do this? Well, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to raise a godly son. And so uh, when she's telling me this just a few years ago, uh, her eyebrows are lifted and it's like, oh, game on. Uh, there was a dedication, and I thought, suddenly a lot of things came to my mind, uh, and I thought, that's why she was on me like white on rice, uh, as a kid, I thought, what in the world? Well, now I know. She'd made a vow to God. And I was the subject of the vow. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Well, <laughs> understood. Uh, this is what happened to Samuel. Hannah prayed a prayer. Hannah made a vow. Samuel was the subject of her vow. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Um, there was a man named Elkanah, and he had two wives. There's a problem already, but that's for another day to talk about that. Um, and one of them... Uh, had uh, a number of children, and the other one, the Bible says, the Lord had closed her womb. 
Well, that's not nice. Why would he do that? So that she would pray. So that she would pray for Samuel. Hannah prayed Samuel into existence because of the burden and brokenness and pain of her heart. You wonder why you go through things? God says, all right, now call on me. Call on me. Why? Because God has purposed that while he could just do things independently all by himself without anybody's notice, notification, or participation, he doesn't want to be a dictator. Though he certainly can be, all he has to do is say something and things race into compliance. Well, that's no big effort for God. What is more intriguing to him is the participation of his children in his plan. So, Hannah can't have children. Come on, Hannah. Talk to me, honey. Come on. I know it hurts, but talk to me. 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 He didn't have to go to that extreme. But she cried out to God out of her distress. And she made a vow and the most outrageous thing she could come up with. How many times have people said, Oh God, if you get me out of this, I promise. I'll, I, I, will, I, will, I will go to church. I'll, uh, I'll do whatever you want. And then they remember things like, oh, they start making deals with God. They're trying to talk God into answering their prayer. So they're offering all kinds. It's like we're at an auction. Okay, well, I'll give you 65 bucks for it then. Well, that's 75? Okay, 100. We make deals. Okay, 100, for 100 bucks, he'll do it. Great, all right. That's more than I wanted to pay, but we got it done. And then you move on. And that's how we do business with God. Hannah went to the house of God uh, for <laughs> feast days, festivals, celebrations. She's not celebrating. She's in agony. She's not eating. Everybody else is eating. It's a wonderful celebration. And she's over in the corner of the church groaning. Why? Distress. Brokenness. Disappointment. All kinds of stuff. Oh, God. If you will give me a son, I'll give him back to you. And then she doubles down. And a razor will never touch his head. She begins to pray the vow of a Nazarite, which was the holiest vow they took in Israel. She said, if you give me a son, he'll be a Nazarite. Well, that's, that's a pretty tall order, Mom. Now, we see the human side of that. She's offering everything that she can offer to God. If he'll only please do this. But God has a plan. God had planned Samuel. Samuel was the last judge in Israel and the first prophet. And he judged Israel for 40 years. He was needed in that day. A man like Samuel was critically important to the existence and survival of Israel in that era. And I need one. I need one. And I figure I can make one, Hannah, if you'll pray. And out of her pain and suffering and disappointment 
and grief and sorrow, she prayed and cried out to God and said, if you give me one, I'll give him back to you. And God says, we can do it. Now, she had many more children after that. Uh, and so we, how come it worked that well? There's a verse that talks about it, not in specific with regard to uh, Samuel, but uh, Romans 11.33 makes reference to a pretty uh, colossal thing. Oh, the depth of riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways are past finding out. <laughs> uh, who can figure out God? Who knows the mind of God that we can counsel him? But we always try to counsel him. But uh, Hannah's circumstances stirred up the need for this uh, fervent prayer. And Samuel was not the result of Hannah's prayer alone, but was inspired by God. Uh, and inspired how? Um, see, you can go to beautiful places and get inspired to write a beautiful poem or a song. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's so beautiful. Uh, oh. uh, and yet, most of the greatest songs that are written are writ out of, written out of sorrow, uh, grief or pain or difficulty, stress. And this is how it was with Hannah. And out of her difficulty, uh, she prays. Uh, she prays to the Lord. Now, it was popular in Israel in those days uh, to uh, worship other gods and go to the high places and, and uh, seek all kinds of other accounts. She prayed, O Lord of hosts, specifically. O Lord God. This word Lord of hosts is an implication of Lord of all, Lord most high, and uh, that's who she consulted. She, that's who she cried out to. She raised her voice to him and makes a vow in verse 11, chapter 1, verse 11. No razor shall touch his head. Um, he'll be a Nazarite all the days of his life. And though she didn't raise him uh, specifically because she took him to the temple when he was weaned, and think of that. So here's, here's the vow I make. Here's the vow I make. I'll give him back to you all the days of his life. So after he's weaned, and I don't know how old he was, somewhere between two and four, she takes him to the temple and drops him off and visits once a year with a care package. I'm sure she spent more than five minutes but she vowed a vow and kept it. Um, it seems like, oh, why would you pray for a child and then do that? It was just the need in her life to say that she had a child. It was worth giving him away to God. Um, that's pretty desperate. That's pretty desperate. Seems extreme to us, uh, but it didn't seem extreme to God because God planned Samuel. Samuel didn't just happen. The Bible says that in the womb you formed me. Uh, God uh, uh, is at work designing and doing and bringing life to pass. So that was what was taking place. Um, he not only answered Hannah's prayer, he received her son and anointed Samuel as a prophet and judge. And he was amazing. Uh, 
how these things come to pass. We think, you know, Samuel's born and God calls him and anoints him and yeah, it's pretty cool. Now there's a lot more detail to that story and how that came to pass. And Samuel was born out of his mother's grief. But she made a vow uh, for him. <laughs> Can you do that? We dedicate our children to the Lord. It doesn't seem to be quite as extreme as what Hannah did, you know. But we dedicate them to the Lord that he would uh, be involved in their lives, that they would come to know him. We dedicate ourselves to the task of them knowing him uh, and following him and serving him. But also, uh, we call upon God to keep his hand upon them, cover them, protect them, Bring them into their purpose. I remember it being at a Promise Keepers rally and uh, Sam Rodriguez was talking about how his dad used to take him to school. His dad was, in, uh, uh, was a landscaper, uh, mowed lawns for a living. And would take him to school every day and pray a little five-second prayer. You know, Lord, bless my son. Keep your hand upon him, protect him, and bring him into his destiny. And then he'd kiss him and send him off to school. Well, he said, my senior year, he didn't park on the side of the school or in the parking lot. He took me up by the flagpole right in front of all the main doors and did that. So I was so then one day, he was in Senator Lott's office in Washington, D.C. And uh, Senator said, uh, just a minute, I'll be right back. And as he leaves, he, start, he looks around and he, suddenly it grips him and he thinks, oh God, what am I doing here? He said, I meant I've answered your father's prayer. Huh? Sometimes we uh, have opportunity to be where we have opportunity to be because our parents prayed. Because mom entered into a vow with God. And mom not only asked it, but watched over it. Uh, God watches over his words to accomplish them. Sometimes he uses moms. And sometimes we feel like our space is being invaded. Well, it is. <laughs> and there's, dis <laughs> there's divine purpose in it. That God would bring forth his desire and plan. Come, God, and do what you do. Do what you want to do. Uh, okay. Uh, I want you to do what? Follow me. The Bible says that none of Samuel's words fell to the ground, meaning whatever he declared never failed. Wow. Now, if, if you claim to be prophetic... That's the bar. Fifty percent, seventy percent, ninety percent doesn't cut it. Samuel batted a thousand. He never whiffed. He never hit a foul ball. His mom watched over the vow to see that it was accomplished. Uh, he was a mighty man of God because of the working of God and because of his mother's prayer and dedication. So sometimes... Uh, 
mom's prayer and dedication seems to be, as I said, uh, invasive. We miss the big picture. God's involved in that. Why did Hannah pray? Because God was involved and closed her womb. Well, what's she going to do? I don't know. Uh, Suffer in silence, or is she going to cry out to God? She cried out to God. God answered her. And and something way bigger than what she imagined actually took place. She was just going to give him back to God. Oh, and he'll be a Nazarite. Okay, well, that's good, but not every Nazarite's a prophet. They're just set apart to God. God one-upped her. Well, I'll take your offering and I'll do something special. And, and God did abundantly above and beyond what she asked or what she thought. I don't think she had any imagination that Samuel would become who he became. Just that he would be set apart and dedicated to God and love God and God could then use him in whatever way that God would please, be pleased to use him in. God said, it would please me to anoint that man and make him judge over Israel. Ooh, didn't see that coming. Oftentimes we don't see what God sees coming. But he has purpose in it. He has purpose for our lives. He has purpose and he has a plan. And we think, oh, God has a good plan. I wonder what resort community I'll be moving to. That's not necessarily how it works. Some of us might find ourselves in the tension or the perplexity between the prayers and dedication of our mom uh, and our own desire, our own plan, our own plan. Um, and I think that's a real thing. I hadn't really considered that before. Sometimes uh, we have tension in life because we have uh, ideas because in school they, uh, they really crank on you to come up with a four-year plan. What are you going to be when you grow up? Well, I don't know. Uh, what sounds fun? What makes the most money? You know, we go down this goofy list of uh, what till we finally start asking God, what do you think? Ah, oh, thought you'd never ask. And how come it's not flowing like uh, Tom and uh, Bill uh, for me? Because your mom prayed for you. So you're not going to just go downstream like Tom and Bill. Because your mom has prayed. And so um, I have a plan. Uh, and what might that be? Well, I'll let you know. Walking with God. It's not a vending machine reality. Uh, how many of you who have children prayed for your children before they were born? How many of you have prayed for your children since they've been born? Okay. How many of you believe that God heard every single communication that came from you heartfelt over your children? Mm -hmm. How many of you think he's just going, that's nice? God says, I hear that. Glad you want what I want. I have a plan for that. We'll begin the implementation. And you're the subject, <laughs> and you're in the middle of going, 
Why is this happening? Because God's involved. It doesn't mean He's not involved in other people who parents don't pray. There's a different level of participation in, from heaven. There's a different level of participation from heaven when parents pray for their children. God gets involved because God's not here to ruin our life. He's here to fulfill our lives and fulfill all our purpose. God wants to fulfill His purpose and His desire in your life. And when that happens, Jesus says, I've got meat, I've got substance uh, that you guys don't know about. And they thought he was hiding lunch. But he said, my substance is to do the will of him who sent me. Uh, it's fulfilling. There's a fulfillment that awaits me in doing what God has desired and designed and planned that I would do. When I connect with that, uh, greater than any other human experience, Jesus said, was doing the will of him who sent me. Samuel connected with that. And uh, uh, we don't know a whole lot about the life of Samuel, about his thoughts and feelings and... and uh, uh, his joys and the wonderful places he saw and things he did, but we know that he walked with God and he fulfilled the plan and purpose that God had for him and he had great um, fulfillment in doing what God had designed that he would do. And it was really brought to pass not only by uh, God's plan, but... God's looking for people to participate in his plan, and he got Hannah involved in his plan. And it wasn't without some sorrow on her part, but God took care of the sorrow. Not only did she have Samuel, but several others. So um, God wasn't being unjust to her by any stretch, and if we had opportunity to ask her, uh, she would do it all again. We dedicate our children to the Lord and ourselves to the process um, so that they might know the Lord and that they might fulfill the purpose of God for their lives. That they might fulfill their destiny. And uh, so, uh, Dr. Samuel Rodriguez now, I believe, but he made mention that he... Says, what's the... Uh, a kid from Sacramento like me doing in Washington, D.C. in the Senate leader's office. I'm fulfilling your father's prayer. Uh, God will fulfill your prayer, Mom. It's not just hot air to the sky. You're calling on God. He says, call on me and I will answer you. And I'll do great and mighty things. I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know anything about. But call on me. Call on me. Because God has purpose, plan, and desire. And uh, we want to participate in that. We want our kids to participate in that. Pray. God will bring, uh, not just bring people into compliance, He'll bring us into our purpose and destiny and fulfillment is known and experienced in that. And we're not just wandering around banging our heads from wall to wall. Trusting God to work out the details and fulfill his purpose. Um, so Enoch uh, had this testimony. The Bible says. We don't know much about Enoch. We know that he walked with God and he disappeared. Uh, 
because God took him. God didn't take him out on the backside of the desert and clobber him. God just vacuumed him up. Huh? He walked with God and disappeared. Hebrews says he had this testimony. This is what people knew about him. He pleased God. So he pleased God in such a manner that God just said, well, we're just going to pass the uh, two people, two people who were not Jesus, did not die. It's appointed unto man once to die, except those two guys, Enoch and Elijah. And I think Enoch probably went in similar fashion to Elijah. He's out there in the desert past the Jordan River, and uh, says chariots of fire. Well, it was an angelic band. The entourage came and swept him home. That's the way to go. That's the way to go. Pretty high treatment. So who got that in the scripture? Elijah and Enoch and nobody else. Not the apostles, not David, not Moses, not Daniel. Enoch, from which we know hardly anything, and Elijah. Ooh. Enoch, he pleased God. He pleased God. He didn't please himself, he pleased God. And there was great fulfillment in it to the extent that God just sent an angel band to escort him home. Ever been in a ticker tape parade? Me neither. Uh, What took place when Enoch pleased God was beyond any ticker tape parade, any parade of champions, any honors ceremony ever conducted. Pleasing God. Pleasing God. Even Samuel didn't get that treatment. But Samuel became who he became because his mom prayed. And she entered into a vow with God, which seems like a uh, unnecessarily grand promise to make. Nevertheless, she made it, and she kept it. And God honored her prayer. Moms, God honors your prayer. The prayers of moms and grandmothers are legendary in the kingdom. So many I've heard speakers say they are where they are today because there was a praying grandma. Uh, War stories to all kinds of stories. Moms and grandmas that prayed. Moms, bless you. Bless you for your love and your tenacity, for your nurturing and your prayer. Bless you. Bless you. And bless your children and all those that you pray for. Uh, Makes a difference. Makes a huge difference. Made a difference here. And brought forth Samuel. Samuel doesn't come without Hannah praying. My prayer is that you'll be encouraged to pray and believe God. And God will work it out and bring it to pass. We don't read how she was full of faith. We read how she was full of desperation. So the enemy will say, well, you know, do you really believe that? And I'll whisper all kinds of dumb lies. 
don't believe him, keep on praying. Keep on crying out to God. God hears. And God answers. So, we thank you, Father God, for your love and mercy and your goodness. We thank you, O oh God, that you hear us when we pray. And I thank you for praying moms and grandmothers who are here today. Bless them and strengthen them. And may they see the fruit and effectiveness of their prayer and their tenacity for those that you've given them. Bless them and keep them. And for all those who are in the tension between the prayers of moms and grandmas and the unfolding of your purpose and destiny, I pray a blessing and endurance. And I pray, O oh God, that all of us would have yielded hearts to you, um, even as Samuel had to come to a point in time in his life where um, he bought in and came into agreement with his mother's prayer and vow. I pray, Lord, that we would be all like Samuel and that we would come into agreement with you. And I thank you for it, Father God. I pray that you would minister your grace and peace, your comfort and hope, your strength and goodness in every one of our lives. And I thank you for it, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, happy Mother's Day. Blessings, everyone. Have a wonderful time with uh, moms and family. And we love you and we'll see you Wednesday. Thank you.